No, I don't waste no time. Yo, yo, what's going on guys and welcome to a new video. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, this is a Q&A that I done uh, on my Instagram this time, actually. So um, ask you guys on Instagram stories, you know, to submit your questions. And then the goal was basically to record this for my Facebook group, uh, the Digital Marketing Consultant Community. Um, but I thought I'd repost this on YouTube as well. So if you have not checked out my Instagram or the group, make sure you do so. And for those of you that are watching this in the group and you have any additional questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or send me a DM uh, with your question and I'll make sure to answer it. So first question is from Giovanni. Can you walk us through your bookshelf? Okay, so that's uh, right off the bat a question where I need to sort of move the camera around. Okay, so now our second question is from Avanash uh, for Outreach. Do you prefer Facebook ads or email? Uh, what do you recommend? So when it comes to outreach, obviously it depends on what you can leverage, right? If you can leverage your cash flow or your money, then Facebook ads will always be the most scalable and the most effective way of doing so. However, not everyone that is, you know, currently in the agency space can actually afford to run ads. At the moment, our cost per call booked. So for someone to come in through the ads, not know who we are, qualify themselves, fill out our application form, and we think, you know, it's a good fit, is around 300 euros, which is expensive for some, but for us, that is actually very, very low because, you know, we have back-end deals in place, our retainers usually start at 1500 pounds a month as well. So the way we see it, one in three usually becomes a paying client. If we can get calls for 300 and one out of every three calls becomes a 1500 a month client plus a back end deal, you know, that is, those are actually good numbers and those are scalable numbers as well. But for the, you know, for the average uh, agency, I should say, email is probably the best way forward because, you know, it's not, uh, cash flow intensive if you set up the right system so for example with the hybrid outreach system that we teach in our pay programs um, it's not very time intensive either you know we have systems built up to make that as automated and as streamlined as possible and then you know an email it's just a numbers game right so if you know that one percent of your emails convert um, into you know a booked call or maybe even higher then you know it's just basically front loading your system getting as many emails in as possible of course of qualified emails that don't bounce and so on and so forth um, and then from there you know getting those people on calls so it sort of depends on where your agency is at um, I mean as I know we you know speak quite regularly for you I would recommend email outreach just make sure that you put a system in place so that you're not manually emailing and following up with these companies because um, like I said you don't do anything a robot can do basically is what I'm trying to say so build a system focus on the emails once you have cash flow for your agency, um, look into paid traffic. Then I am Yuvrashai. I'm sorry, my apologies. I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce your name because I will butcher it. How to track accurate Facebook ad results? Does it require GTM, Google Tag Manager, and Google Analytics? So nowadays, post iOS 14, if you want to run ads, there's a few things you need to do. You need to make sure that the business manager of your clients is verified. So not the blue tick or not like that. Their business manager actually has all of their business info and you've basically applied for business verification. On Facebook, you've gotten it approved. Second thing you need to do is you need to verify the domain or ask the client to verify the domain so that in Facebook's eyes, you know, you are a legitimate business because the business is verified. And the domain that you're sending traffic to is also a, you know, a legitimate domain and it's been verified by Facebook. Once you have those two things, you need to set up aggregated event measurements. So basically what you're doing is you're telling Facebook that you want to prioritize certain events over others because going forward, um, not all of the events can be tracked. I've done a video on this as well on my YouTube channel. So I'll link that you know, somewhere in the description or uh, in the comments below. Um, but like I said, you can't just track as many events as you want anymore. So you need to tell Facebook what events to prioritize. And then of course, 
uh, this will disappear conversion window whether people have opted in or opted out to track it and so on and so forth so once you've done that um, just quickly rereading the question how to track Facebook ad results does it require Google Tag Manager Google Analytics oh yeah so once you've done that go to settings make sure that you've selected all of the um, events that you want to track so not the events as in like lead etc but all the events as in first name last name email address etc you can find all that in the events manager on the settings and then of course make sure you set up your conversion api once you've done that you will basically win back as much data as you possibly can with just facebook if your client is a shopify store i recommend setting up trackify which is currently 30 dollars a month it's a plugin through you know shopify uh, just get your clients to fund this because they will benefit from it in the long run and that will give you back i'd say 80 to 90 percent of the lost data uh, back into your ads manager and you can also see in trackify um, what data was picked up by trackify but not by facebook um, google tag manager and google analytics is something you can do the one thing i don't like about google analytics is there's no it's just it's just a click right it's sort of like browser based tracker at least as far as i know um so the view etc will not be tracked hope that makes sense okay and then our third question is from Mateus bezerrax if i'm not confident to close a deal with a client is it worth hiring a closer um so that is basically how i've structured my agency um so on the front end we have facebook ads we have referrals we have appointment setters and we have uh, emails going out that is like i said you know that is in combination of uh, the, a combination of the hybrid outreach system i should say um, and then I have a sales guy, Elliot, who is my head of operations, also known as the CEO of Brampaneer. Um, he does all the communication and sales. And then on the back end, I run the ads. So that is how I've structured my agency. That is how I prefer to run the agency. And for me, I've basically picked out what I don't like doing, what process I don't prefer to do myself. And I've basically built systems or I've outsourced it. Um, however, with that said, the reason why um, I've done it this way is because I know I can generally get results for the clients if I run the ads more often than not and especially myself when I just started out the reason why I was not confident to close a deal with the client is because I deep down I didn't really think I could get those clients results if that is the case with you then you need to seriously rethink your whole business and figure out a way to get your client results if you wholeheartedly believe that you can get your clients results a deal you know a closed deal is much easier to do so now if i were if i needed to hop on a call because um you know something has happened to uh, like i said elliot then i can do so and i'm confident that i can close a deal provided that the client is a good fit because i know i can get the results if they can almost sense it you know if you are not confident in yourself and you're not confident in the service but if you are it's not so much of a hard sell it's basically just a way of figuring out okay is this a win-win situation if it is then let's do business together so if you're not confident think to yourself why is it that you're not confident is it that you're not experienced well if that's the case you just need to jump in the deep end and just do it you know get those reps under um on the belt you know make sure you you have a few calls to figure out basically you'll figure out that it's not actually as scary as you think it is um and that you will build up confidence over time or if it's because you're not confident in your service, then you need, like I said, you need to figure out what's going wrong, why you're not confident in your service, what can you do to improve that? Because it's 2022 at the time recording this, guys. It's not 2018 anymore. It's not 2017 anymore. We can't just, you know, build an agency on um, mediocre results. That's why all of these gurus now that are still teaching the Upwork business model, these guys will slowly become obsolete because it's no longer about getting the clients and outsourcing for cheap and cheerful it's about building a sustainable business getting good results and actually earning money on the back end with a win-win situation so hope that answers your question Matthias. um next question is from ryan thoughts on others in the industry using the name hybrid outreach method in their programs um haven't really come across that to be fair so i wouldn't really know if that is the case um and yeah you know fair play i don't really care if they use my um, if they use the method or if they use the name for another method if they use the word hybrid you know it's not like i own the word hybrid um so yeah i guess everyone that watches my channel my stuff knows that i was the first person to come up with the hybrid outreach system i just made the name up um, i thought it made sense and yeah if you want to use it it's sort of more clout for me right you know it sort of proves that 
you know, my stuff works if people are trying to copy me. So, um, yeah, but like I said, personally, I haven't come across anyone that used the word hybrid, so I wouldn't know. Feel free to message me if you, if you know anyone that does. I'll be uh, interested to see what it is. Um, next question from Bastian. What book are you currently reading and do you read physical books or ebooks or audiobooks? Um, so I am currently reading Kintsugi for the Mind. I've actually got it here, uh, which is actually a book from a friend of mine called Max Hindle. And it's basically about manifesting your perfect life, about mindset and perspective almost. No, so it's not necessarily that airy fairy, you know, believe and you will become kind of stuff. It's basically about perspective, teaching you about know how you can view the world in a different way and be much more uh, positive but also get more energy from that if that makes sense so um, highly recommend you guys read it um, it's on Amazon if you guys want to pick it up um, and then in terms of like reading uh, physical and etc I like physical books I like to buy the physical book um, what I'll usually do is I will alternate between the three so I'll buy the physical book just so I can have it in my, on my bookshelf I will get the ebook on my phone for when I haven't got the physical book on me and I'll listen to the audio book on my morning walks. So as soon as I get up, usually I will grab a cup of coffee um, and then after that first coffee, I'll go for a morning walk and I'll listen to either a podcast or an audio book. The podcast, because I know I get that question quite often as well, is not necessarily a you know self-improvement podcast. It will usually be something that is completely different than the industry. Either an interview, something that I'm interested in, or just, you know, football related. Just something completely different, just to relax. Um, and if I'm actually in the mood to learn something or want to know something or, you know, anything like that, then I'll listen to the audiobook version of the book that I'm currently reading. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Chick Hal Reedy, again, apologies. Uh, these names, you know, are unfamiliar to me. I don't even know if that's a first name or a surname or a nickname. I don't know. My apologies. Will Mark Zuckerberg step down? Um, not that I know of. Uh, of the, obviously, they've now hired uh, Nick Clegg uh, to step forward to sort of do all like the statements, etc., to be sort of like the eye in the in the public. You know, he's the person who does all the statements, etc., moving forward with regards to the metaverse. Um, I don't know if that means that Mark Zuckerberg is stepping down, or if he just wants to free up his time so he can work on the metaverse in the background, etc. I don't know. Um, I think it will be a dark day for Facebook if Mark does step down. I think it will have a serious impact on the ads as well and you know, basically way, the way the business is moving forward. But honest answer is, I, I don't know. So um, yeah, apologies for not being more informed with that. I don't think anything has been mentioned about Mark Zuckerberg stepping down, at least not as far as I know. Um, so yeah, next question is from Jacob J J Jacob Smigs. I think that's that's how you pronounce it. How to overcome procrastination. Ooh, to be fair, that's something that I still struggle with. I think everyone struggles with it, you know, to a certain degree. It's not something that you can completely eliminate. I know there's a lot of people that say you need to work X amount of hours a day and stuff like that. Um, I actually put up a post on Facebook about, you know, working smart and working hard, etc. And working hard will only get you so far. You know, I'm more of a person that will rather create a system and streamline that system than put in the hours, if that makes sense. So like, if you tell me to do something, and I, I know some, even though the task would take me 10 minutes, but I know somewhere deep down that, you know, there is a way to get around this and automate it, I'd rather spend two hours automating it so it's always automated from that point onwards than just to spend the 10 minutes doing that actual thing, if that makes sense. So in a way that could also be seen as procrastination. But um, yeah, like I said, I just know for, for a fact that I can't, you know, just work for eight, nine hours nonstop without procrastinating, without um, chilling out for a bit. Um, but of course, you know, that is, I've built the business in a way that, that allows me to be able to do that. You know, if I want to listen to a podcast while I'm working, or if I want to tell you while I'm working, put up a series, you know, every hour I'm watching an episode of that, I can, because that's, my business allows me to do that. If I just look at what I need to do on a daily basis, I can be done within 90 minutes tops um, and then just spend the rest of the day just chilling. The reason why I don't chill for most of the day is because I like to do stuff like this, right? Record Q&As for you guys. I've got a podcast right after this um, that I'm doing. Not my own podcast. I'm a guest speaker on someone else's podcast. Um, you know, I like to work out. You know, there's a lot of stuff I like to do on a daily basis that is, can be seen as work-related, personal brand-related. Um, but you know, like I said, it's because I want to do it, not because I have to do it. 
but then in terms of procrastination what i would probably do and sometimes when i do need to actually get work done i've got a deadline to work to um or i don't but i do want to actually get something finished i will create a fake deadline for myself because uh, of parkinson's law for those that don't know what parkinson's law is you know definitely google it or look it up on youtube it's very very interesting and basically they say the work will expand based on the time you give it so if you give yourself two hours to finish a task uh, you'll pr most probably get it done within two hours but if you give yourself a month to do it chances are you'll probably procrastinate for the first few weeks and then in that last week you'll you know slowly but surely get it done so Give yourself a fake deadline. Give yourself a time at which you want to have finished you know, your whole uh, task or that project, etc. And chances are you'll probably figure out a way to get it done within that time. Obviously, don't you know bombard yourself with tasks to the point of burnout, but use that to your advantage. So, for example, I am re-recording the whole Lifestyle Design Mastery program, um, and I've given myself Q1 to do so. You know, obviously alongside that my main priority is always going to be the agency so i've got the agency that i'm still running alongside that we also have a higher tier program consult x so you know it's very easy for me to think you know what i'll just re-record the module a week and then be done next year but i've purposely given myself you know three months to do so um and you know i will most definitely get it done within the, the three months you know and if that means working over weekends or um not procrastinating as much but getting extra work done during the day then you know so be it so Parkinson's law, guys, the work will expand based on, the, or you know, decrease based on the time you give it. Then Kelvin says, do you still sell hoodies? Um, oh, by the way, just back to the Jacob stuff, something I completely forgot to mention is systems building. So make sure that you set up systems that can remove yourself from those processes. And that way, you know, because more often than not, if you procrastinate, it's because you don't like a specific task. Or, you know, it feels like such a big hurdle to overcome. So, like for me, with outreach, it's something that I did not like doing, I did not enjoy doing, so I built a system around that. Now it's automated and outsourced and delegated, etc. you know, obviously with the hybrid outreach system. So, build systems based around things that you don't actually enjoy actively doing. But anyway, back on to Kelvin's question, do you still sell hoodies? So, yeah, it's one drop and one drop only. Um, we still have hoodies. I think extra large is sold out. I think small is sold out at this point as well. Um, it, to, to double check the more like garments website and you'll be able to see, you know, what size is still available. But yeah, we do still have hoodies. We still have some stock, um, but once they're gone, they are completely gone. So um, yeah, if you are thinking about picking one up, make sure you do so soon because like I said, you know, um, once they're sold out, they will not be brought out again. And that's not fake scarcity. I just don't have the, or I don't prior, I don't want to say I don't have the time to do it because I probably have, but I don't want to prioritize building a clothing brand because I've got the agency. And then that is, oh no, we've got one more question from Av Avniash. Um, do you accept all clients or do you reject clients that are too big or too small? So we certainly don't accept all clients. More often than not, uh, if we reject them, it's based on two things. Either we don't like the business owner, which I know sounds a bit strange, but it's gotten to a point now where I can sort of pick who I want to work with and I can I can tell right off the bat whether or not it's going to be a good uh, working relationship or not. So if the client talks down to us, if the client expects too much from us, if the client seems like he's not going to be the kind of guy I can vibe with, for, you know, lack of a better word, then we will probably just turn down the client and say, listen, you know, it's not going to work out. We don't think we're on the same level, uh, same wavelength. Um, or if the client's too small. So I know that I can get the best results for businesses that have a proven product, have a good product market fit, have already gotten sales, have sort of surpassed the 20K mark, and want to scale further. That is where my expertise is probably best leveraged or used. So if a client is smaller than 20K a month, more, they are more likely not to be able to afford our retainer or they will not be able to afford to put in as much ad budget as we'd like. Or, you know, of course, there's a more deeper lying reason why they're not at 20K a month yet is because they don't have that product market fit, the website is not optimized and so on and so forth. So if a client, like I said, this, it, this is like a loose guideline. We don't necessarily always stick to it. If a business has potential or that has backing from an, you know, a third party or anything like that, you know, we can entertain it. 
but more often than not, if a client is relatively small, we won't entertain it. We will, I won't say reject, we'll probably just say, you know, circle back around, you know, when you're at a, a better stage in your business. Or like I said, if a client, if, if I don't think the client is gonna be a right fit, you know, in terms of like relationship wise, then I will also turn around that client or I will refer them on to someone that I think can manage that client better than I can. So hope that makes sense. Um, and like I said, I think that is the last question. I've just written them down. Um, so if you have posted the question on my Instagram stories and I haven't answered it, um, I will try and get back to you or just send me a DM. Just remind me of the question that you've had and I'll definitely get back to you as well. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you're watching this on Facebook, leave a comment down below that you've made it to the end of the video. And uh, I'll speak to you guys in the next one.